This is the problem of finding the resistivity of an irregularly shaped object. So this is a truncated cone. I'm going to put the cone lying sideways like this on the x-axis with the x-axis running through the center and the y-axis running through one end. The height at this end is A and the height at this end is C. Now we want the resist resistance between the two ends of this cone. Now the formula for resistance in terms of resistivity, which is on the formula sheet, R is rho L over A. Now, because the cross-sectional area of this cone is changing between its ends, we're going to have to integrate this formula. And the way you slice it up to integrate is into little circular disks. The thickness of the disks will be dx, and the area of each disk will be a, and it will be different as you move from one end of the cone to the other. The dimension h is from one end to the other end. Okay, so in order to turn that into an integral, the length becomes a little bit of length dx, but the area remains a finite value. That area now is a function of x, so it cannot come out of the integral. Rho is, is constant though, so it can come out. So we're trying to integrate dx over a. Now, the area of this cross-section is a function of its radius, which is actually the dimension y. And so the area is pi y squared, the area of a circle. Well, but that still doesn't help us in the integral because we need y in terms of x. So in order to get y in terms of x, we look at that top line of the cone, and it is a straight line. A and C are the heights of that um, line, H, dimension, and this is Y and X. So it's a straight line. The equation of the straight line is Y equals MX plus B. In our case, the slope would be C minus A over H times X, and the Y-intercept would be A. So that's the equation of the line, and that's how you relate y to x. Now, instead of writing c minus a over h so many times, I'm just going to leave it as m x plus a. Now, I'm going to sub that into my integral and carry out the integral. So r becomes rho dx, and instead of a, I'm going to write pi y squared, and instead of y, I'm going to take the pi out as well. Instead of y squared, I'm going to write mx plus a squared. And to further help with this integral, I'm going to bring that mx plus a to the top and take it to the negative 2 power dx. Okay, that is a standard polynomial integral. However, in order to integrate that, I need an m in the integral. So I'm going to have to pull an m out of the integral on the bottom. And then I still have the mx plus a to the minus 2 and an m inside. Oops, I'm running out of room. Times dx. Okay, so let's carry out this integral. We have rho over pi m. And it's just a standard form. We have mx plus a to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 evaluated from, from 0 to h. So that's our x dimension. So let's, let's carry on. I'm going to take that negative sign out. So I have minus rho over pi m. Put in the h, and I have 1 over mh plus a minus, put in the 0, 1 over a. Now I'm going to take that to a common denominator. Now technically that could be the answer. But if you want to make it look a lot better, you take it to a common denominator, and you'll see a lot of things will cancel. So we have a minus mh plus a all over the product of mh plus a times a. So on the top we're going to have negative mh. The a's are gone. 
and we still have the a m h plus a. The negative signs are gone, the m's are gone, so now I've got a rho h over pi times 1 over a times m h plus a. Now I still further want to sub in what m is, and we'll get even more simple. So we have 1 over, now m is equal to c minus a over h. So m times h is c minus a. Plus a all times a. And so we're left with rho h over pi a c. And that's the answer for the resistance of that cone.